Let's welcome in the delegate from the 93rd District, Mike Hornby. We just call him the boss around here. Good morning, Michael. <laughs> Good morning, Bobby. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Good morning, Mike. Okay. I am uh, just, I've been looking forward to this for such a long time. You had to cancel last Wednesday because you you were busy at, the, at this time. I got called into a meeting, yes. Yeah. And it was for a good reason, too, wasn't it? It was. Uh, you know, I, I got summoned to uh, to Mr. Householder's office, which was uh, pretty scary. It felt like I was going to the headmaster. <laughs> um, Eric does uh, have quite a lot of power down here, as you know. Um, so uh, it's just a big learning curve right now. Hey, Mike, uh, I noticed during the State of the State address, you were standing with all your splendor, maybe four rows back, four or five rows back. seemed like everybody kind of moved aside so the camera could, could focus on you. <laughs> I like, I'm like. i actually in the second row, Bill. Second uh, right row. Behind okay. John, right behind John Hardy, and uh, I sit next to the uh, ju- judiciary chair and vice chair. Yeah. Well, your influence has taken effect very quickly, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> they barely know my name down here. <laughs> the the game within the game in regards to the 50% personal income tax cut that the governor wants to get through, the House is behind it. Mike, uh, the Senate is considering it. What are you hearing down there in terms of progress? Uh, I think we are voting on it today. Um, I think it will pass overwhelmingly. I think, you know, if not now, when? Um, I think it's a great plan. I think, you know, the governor, the Senate, and the House leaders all got together and came together right before session started, and we started hearing rumors that that was uh, coming in the state of, uh, state address, um, and everybody's kind of behind it. What are you hearing on the Senate side? Anything? Any rumors? I don't hear anything on the Senate side. I know Mr. Barrett was roaming the halls yesterday, and he didn't remember my name. So, um, well, he's big time. He, he, he introduced himself to me, uh, which was which was quite fun. That is, that and I happen cool. to be in his in his office and have his old desk. So, yeah. oh, that's nice. Yeah. And, yeah. and you respond said, "Hi, I'm Delegate Hornby." Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, and then you bow. Yeah. <laughs> and then you bow. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yeah. Now, I will, I will say Craig Blair is much much more easier to get along with. <laughs> what, what concerns do you have about the personal income tax cut, Mike, if any? I don't have any, Rob. I really don't. When I, when I look at it, I, I see only positives for all West Virginians. Um, I, I kind of leaned on Ken Apple way back when. I heard him on your show. I think even low-income um, families are getting getting a cut, but most of those low-income, like really low-income families, don't pay taxes anyway. So I, I think it's a good good thing for West Virginia, and I think it puts more money back in the economy. There's going to be a push on the Senate side, at least I think there will be, from Eric Tarr and uh, uh, President Blair uh, to re- revisit uh, the personal property tax, revision of that. Uh, What's going to be your position on that, uh, if it gets in the way of the personal income tax? Well, if it gets in the way, then I would have an issue. I think uh, this is a nice, clean, simple 50%, you know, 30, 30 now, 10, 10. Um, I, you know, I don't see the Senate putting too much obstacles in it. But again, I'm not in those leadership meetings, so I, I can't really speak to that, Bill. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing a comment on our uh comment page on Facebook uh, that Jackie Long says, I see J.J. announced his candidacy to run against Manchin. I presume that that means Jim Justice. Have you heard anything about that in the Capitol? I have not heard. The only thing I've heard about Mr. Justice is he's he's got COVID. Yeah. Well, he's becoming more and more vocal. In fact, someone asked him recently. He was on, uh, uh, was it Fox News last night, the night before last? You're talking about the tax cut bill. Yeah, yeah, and they asked him the question, was he planning to run? And uh, he did everything except say, I'm definitely running. He's walked up to the very... To the line, to the brink, to the brink. Yeah, yeah. I think he's crossed. Yeah, I think. I mean, it, it's pretty obvious. It, his uh, state of the state address was pretty much a campaign uh, announcement. If you kind of look read between the lines and on everything that he's asking for. Damon Wright wants uh, he, to know how difficult it has been reading through and understanding the various bills. So. You know, we've got a, a number of bills in uh, in education that are coming through. So anybody can put a bill in, right? So some of these bills are long and arduous, but you got to get to the bottom of it. And 
I know we have a uh, one coming up today in committee that I, I'm, I was very proud to co-sponsor. It's the speaker's bill adding aids to uh, West Virginia schools and adjusting some of those uh, school aid formula to give them more money to get those aids. So um, I was honored to be asked to be uh, on that uh, piece of legislation, and I can't wait to get into the weeds this afternoon in my education committee meeting. Now, that was part of the uh, uh, the governor's state of the state, was it not? In quite honestly, I think it was part of that negotiation. This is one of the speaker's uh, biggest, uh, the House speaker's biggest bills that he he's been promoting, and uh, you know I think Craig Blair wanted the the, the bash. I think they all got together, and I think uh, that's how it kind of came about. Are people careful what they say around you, knowing that you own a radio and TV station? Because I was the might black like sheep of the family for the first three days until you know <laughs> they realized I wasn't blabbing everything out. Because we do go into caucus, and, and most of the caucus stuff is private. You know, the, the leadership tells us where we're going and what we're doing. Uh, but fortunately, there's actually quite a few people in the media um, in the Republican side, so um, they've been very nice to me so far. Is there truth to the rumor? Uh, delegate uh that uh before someone tells you anything they say now don't tell rob <laughs> <laughs> i am shocked to how many of the um delegates know about rob and actually listen to our show um and these are people from down south who, you know I, I just met and probably haven't heard of before i, I came down here but th- he has quite a following he does have, yeah. Not only uh, within the state, he's getting a larger and larger following throughout the country. I know right. several people, <laughs> both in the South and uh, all the way from uh, Carolina to Tennessee, that listens to listen to him. Yeah. So, and then you know, I get I do get comments about the admiral, but I have to defend you, Bill. So, uh, yeah. please do, uh, Mike. Re- please do. I've re- I've realized I'm not the most conservative person uh, down here. There's there are people more conservative than you down there, right? Yeah, uh, very much so. By the way, Mr. Ferretti, if you're still listening, and Mr. Staggers, my, my two attorney friends there, I'll be employing you as uh, representing me in the next contract negotiations with Mr. Horman. <laughs> we we got to get you down on the rotunda doing a live show, Rob. Yeah, it's, if Hoppy can do it, Rob can it, do it. It's, yeah. a long, it's a long drive. <laughs> it's a long drive. <laughs> it's a bit of a commute. <laughs> I don't know what time it's, I have to wake up to get long there. Drive. Wake up at 1 a.m. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, let's, let's talk about the... the uh, education bill and you said in in regards to getting aids uh, in the classroom we're talking about one aid per classroom two aids per classroom and what type of classrooms are we talking about we're talking first second and third grade so uh, obviously mathematics and and reading are so important at that early age Um, we have such a robust pre-kindergarten and kindergarten um, system especially you know up in Berkeley County but across the state we're actually that's the one thing we're we're in the top half of in our education it just seems that we drop off by the time we get to that third grade test so the, the, the bill basically gets you an aid in every first, second, and third grade. Uh, I believe it's a third grade classroom. Was was that part of what the governor was talking about when he wanted? I think he said forty million dollars for for uh, grade school education and, and aids and such. Yes, I, I believe that is, and I think uh, what they're doing is they're adjusting it to give schools more money per thousand students so that they yeah. could have less kids in the classrooms too okay uh, and and what do you hear about that in terms of the likelihood of its passage oh I, I think it's definitely I mean we it's coming up in committee today I think it's very popular I think there's some things that we need to talk about I know there's a multi-tiered rating system that is going to be put in place so I mean I don't want to get in the weeds too much before committee starts and we actually get into it um, it is a pretty uh, extensive bill, so um, we'll go through that today. I've, I've read it a couple of times, and I, I, I just really like it. I like the idea. I think it's something new, and you know, we've got to try and do something to get our, our test scores up as well as get our students up to reading and mathematics levels. You've talked about the age in the first three grades, kindergarten and first three grades. What mm-hmm. about special ed? So this this bill does not address special ed, but we do have uh, another bill that is that I've seen, um, and I haven't dived into it as much as this one because this one's coming up today. Um, but to get more counselors and more special ed um, uh, needs, and I've, I've been working with a number of teachers from Berkeley County to kind of help me get through that because I don't have the understanding of the special ed that maybe I should. Jackie Long 
said, as we well know, she's the vice president of the Board of Education here in Berkeley County. I'm excited about that bill to put additional aides in the classroom, but worried that counties won't be able to find the actual employees to fill the roles. So we're also addressing that by obviously giving more money to the aides. But we also have, and you, you were right, so we, the governor wants a 5% for all uh, state employees. So if that passes, that's an initial 5%. But I am also a co-sponsor on a bill lifting the ceiling of starting wages for, for, um, for teachers based on their zip code and the median salaries around them, um, which I think has legs. Um, the... Education chair is the one who sponsored that initially, and it was kind of, I talked to you about that about six months ago, and I really like that idea. So I think if we can get some of these things done, um, and obviously they've got to go to finance, and they have a fiscal note to them, and you know, finance will make the final decision, and, and, and then they'll go to the floor. But I really like the idea, and if the money, in the, if the money is there, I think uh, we can get there. Uh, Mike, in addition to the money for the special, uh, for the aids, uh, are the criteria has been established? And if they have been, what are the criteria? So, as I said, it's only going to committee today. So we'll, we'll read through the bill, and the lawyers will give us the uh, the exact meaning of the, of what they're saying. Um, but there is criteria. It's a multi-tiered system to help ensure that each student is attaining a certain level to get to the next grade at the same time. So in regards to this uh, lifting the, uh, you said the floor and the ceiling for, for wages for teachers. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know in talking with the people we've spoken with already, Delegate uh, Hardy, Senator Barrett, there doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be an appetite for that five point five percentage point raise unless there's locality pay tied to it. Mike, are you still feeling that? Well, and yeah, I think uh, you know that that five percent was quite a quite that's quite a big number, right? Um, but the the governor did mention locality pay in his speech, which is uh, pretty important. I think this this um, bill that we're introducing will, will address that, but it will also help all the other counties that aren't next to large uh, banks. So I think that will address that locality pay, if you will. Um, uh, piece of, of the, the the puzzle, um, but I haven't seen any actual legislation for locality pay come across my desk or be introduced yet. Senator Barrett said on this show he is willing to consider voting down the five percent pay raise if locality pay is not a part of it. Mike, would would you make a similar statement? Shoot. So taking away five percent from everybody just for locality pay—I don't know, Rob. I—I I, I have to look at it. I, I don't know if I could stomach that to to take away five percent from everybody just for uh, locality pay. I would certainly look into it, but um, it's one of those things I'd have to read to read the legislation before I make make a decision. Now, to be clear. The five percent raise would kick in for everybody. It's just that the counties with the higher cost of living would get an additional with with the locality. And, and, if that's clear. the case, you know, I, I would vote for that legislation if it, if it came out of finance and was recommended. Mm -hmm. And how much would that cost? You have I, I'm sorry, oh, I Mike. You, no I know. I, yeah. I was going to apologize because I know you've not yeah. had a chance to look at it. Okay. Yeah. yeah and, and again, a lot of this stuff has to go through committee before you can actually read the real text of, of the of the bill uh, there's a lot of amendments and obviously you can't read every single bill introduced so you've got to rely fortunately for me my uh, office mate and roommate is in finance so I can get a little bit of insight into his uh, he's on uh, he's on health too so he's in the DHHR uh, budget presentation right now um, I know that is something big that the that we're looking to do and, and Mike's been involved in that um, but until they get through committee, um, I stay out of the other committee's uh, bills until, until they get to, to where I'm at. What it's about my first week? What about DHHR? Uh, so obviously, um, I think uh, I think it's too big. Um, I think they need to do. I think they need to do something about it. Um, and they're talking about that in health. I, I believe uh, they're uh, they're hearing all the from the different. Uh, I think it's going to be introduced to the health committee tomorrow, um, the actual plan. So um, they, they just want to talk to all the different secretaries, make sure they're on the same page. 
PEIA is the other big issue that we've been hearing a lot about. Uh, are you on a committee that will address parts of PEIA? So I am on banking and insurance. Um, I haven't seen the actual – we haven't voted on anything or taken up any bills in committee yet. Uh, we had our first meeting kind of organizationally yesterday, kind of just went through it. Um, but uh, we'll be hitting that next week. Um, but, yeah, it's been like drinking from a fire hose. Lots of information, super fast, and the parliamentary stuff is what's uh, what gets me. The parliamentary stuff is always, you have to learn those rules so you know how all that yeah. flows, right? and the speakers asked me to speak on something today, and I'm like definitely nervous, as you know, Robert. Oh, like really what do you have to speak on, man? That. I have to unanimously consent to move the bills from first or second, move the introduction. So I've got it all written out. I'm just going to read from it, stand up, sit down, and hopefully don't make a fool of myself. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Why, why, did he first time speaking. why did he ask you to do that? That's pretty cool. Um, I think they ask everybody. They kind of go through the through the list. Through the ranks. Um, have different people do uh, the prayer and the pledge, and uh, just to make everybody well involved. I will say this: I'm very impressed with Roger Henshaw on how knowledgeable he is and how welcoming he is. He makes everybody feel uh, on both sides. Uh, I think uh, very um, welcome and a part of the group. He's an impressive guy. He really is. He now, very. He very. I'm very impressed. You mentioned parliamentary uh, uh, procedure. Do you use uh, Robert's Rules of the Road? Not r- r- uh, road. That's my Robert's Rules. So I believe it starts there, then it goes. And you, again, you have to correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, because I I don't know a lot of, about this. But it's like Jeffersonian rules, and then Mason, I believe. Um, is is how they, they, they word it, but all that stuff kind of goes over the top of my head. I'm learning what they say and you know you, how to how to address the speaker, how to address the chairs, when to speak, when to not to speak. So well, even in committee, you've got to have those rules. Well, Mike, you've been there what two weeks, a week and a half, a uh, week. You you're pretty impressive. How much you've uh, you've you know about it now? <laughs> I don't know about that, Bill. I still have to ask a lot of questions. Uh, especially about the the rules of when, how. I mean, we had a bill um, in uh, in uh, economic development yesterday that I just it, it didn't make sense. It, it looked like two bills to me, um, and I was confused why we were running two bills in one. And they were like, "Oh, don't worry, they'll split it up." I'm like, well, why are we voting on it now? So um, it was. I just keep asking questions, and then afterwards, I get I get either reprimanded or told good question. <laughs> Mike, what else? But I, oh, go ahead, finish. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, what else do you want to accomplish on education during this 60 day session? You personally, now, I don't mean what the education committee wants to accomplish. Where do you want to go? So, so here's the thing I can, everybody's got a good idea, right? And there's uh, over 700 bills that have been introduced. Um, I did go down and write my first bill, um, which I'm excited to do. I haven't got it back from bill writing yet, but it is that small business um, built. Uh, uh, small business incentive for business small businesses to move to to West Virginia. Um, I'm very proud of it. I think it's got some legs. Um, so uh, that's one thing. I think in education, a lot of these the ideas I had and the feedback I had from the board of education, I think a lot of those are being addressed already. Um, so I've jumped on a number of. Um, bills co-sponsoring that were already in the works. It does take a little while to get a bill. If you come in day one and write a couple of bills, it takes a couple of weeks. So I'm going to be a little behind the eight ball, if you will, trying to get a bunch of laws done. Um, and for me, it was like support more about learning this year and supporting the, the the education bills I support because uh, there's a lot of good ones, and if we can get raises for Berkeley County teachers, um, you know, I'd be extremely happy. And if we can stop that um, that process where it's so hard to get those new teachers in the classroom, Bill, I've got a minute so left. Th- yeah. oh, thank you, Mike. Bill, I've got a minute left. What else you have for him? Uh, no, I think you've covered a lot of it, Mike. So thanks much. Again, I, I'm sorry for not going into too much detail, but uh, I can only give you what I know, um, and it, it's uh, it'll it'll get more and more every week. I look forward to talking to you, and uh, uh, look forward to seeing you next week. All right, don't hang up just yet. I want to know how okay. how are the living accommodations with you and Height and the roommate accommodations, <laughs> both at work and at home, going. <laughs> I've been trying to get Height on the show, and I still haven't been able to get him. So, 
You know what? You probably won't. He is, he's working hard. He's on five committees and two big ones. So uh, he is. Uh, He's got finance, and he's on health, so he's doing DHHR, and he's doing this tax bill. He was working until 7.30, 8 o'clock, but I rode with him to work, so I was sitting here until 7.30, 8 o'clock, too. <laughs> Maybe so call an Uber I found out he had finance this afternoon. I said, no, I'm driving my own car. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Boss, good to talk with you again. Good to see you, Bobby, and say thanks for being nice to me, Bill. <laughs> Always, Mike. Always. And, and happy anniversary to my beautiful wife, Crush. It was our anniversary yesterday. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Happy anniversary.